So today we're cutting a bunch of Landrace Machada butternuts out of this new Hugo culture development here. <laughs> to get them stomped down a little bit. So I'm going to show you this example of companion planting with winter squash on Hugelkultur terrace beds. So I've got sunflowers in here that finally came around. They did take their time. Uh, everything was planted out pretty much the end of June. The rock wall in the front built a little bit later. You got runner beans in here. They had so much beautiful color. They've been flowering for quite a while. Now bring the, uh, the pollinators, the bees in for the squash. You got scallions popping through. Lots of kale, red vlance, some curly, some blue haze in here as well. Beautiful squashes that are ready. There's a couple that could go just a little longer, but there's lots of mature as well. And I also did have um, cucumber in the front here uh, for a little while. I got a few cukes. They were older plants that had mites, so I did just decide to pull them out. I was training all the runners up mainly onto the new hoogle area that's not covered it's just a whole bunch of like slash cut out of this area here and piled so that will be covered uh, next year and planted out great having you know them climb up onto brush because it holds the fruits off of the ground and keeps them nice and pristine also at the base here i've got some celery um there were plants that i just tossed out and threw in a pile here and they're growing and we got a large blueberry in here also seeded some amaranth and quinoa. Just a couple kind of came around and matured. These are great for bird seed. You want to cut up high on the stem, like so, for storage. So the idea with land race is, like in this case, you take a whole bunch of butternut varieties and you just grow them all together and you let them cross. And then you just select the most robust, best ones. You know, you can select for particular traits just like any type of you know traditional breeding um, but in general you just want that diverse genetic pool you know you mix all the seeds together and you get a variation you know the genetic diversity really helps with them being able to grow in different climates and extreme conditions potentially uh, this uh, loft house land race selection these were selected for growing in low fertility soils so that's a really nice start they're going to be saving seed and keep this going. You know, it is ideal to do like a land race with, with anything uh, on your own property. That way it becomes more climatized. Uh, but I think just starting out with something like this also um, has a bit of an advantage. So I actually did plant one other butternut variety in here. Early remix butternut. Um, so it's kind of the same idea as the land race. Done enough. It's uh, like... October 11th or 12th today, I think. Some beauties. Could go longer. Some of the vines still look really healthy, actually. Pretty sure that would be a volunteer.
still 16 on the vines that I'm just gonna leave to try to mature a little bit longer as long as the weather is still nice. We've got 30 counted here, harvested. And uh, typically in terms of seed saving, I won't be saving any um, seeds from smaller ones like this or like this. Um, in general, I'm going to try to select the ones that did mature first, just to try to keep the genetics a bit more early. I think I'm gonna to try to do like two of each shape and um, you know, for seed collection. So I have some that go limey green before they mature, which is less typical of a butternut, but they look really beautiful. So I'll probably add some of that genetics into my seed collection as well. Also, there's some pretty large ones still on the vine, not necessarily uh, early maturing, but that's okay. I want some quite a bit of diversity in my seed collection, so I'll probably add some of those as well. Beautiful runner beans just growing all through the squash patch here. So more squash to harvest actually. I got some wicking barrels with butter bush just drooping over the sides as well as another companion planting bed with blueberry, strawberry bulbs. We got squash growing in there through potatoes. Going to be digging some of those potatoes. Some volunteers that I've been eyeing up uh, for seed collection that I want the genetics from um, as well as some melons and uh, we'll just see what else we can find. So stick around. All right, I got two wicking barrels here with uh, butter bush just drooping over. Pretty sweet. And to my surprise, some celery actually kind of came around now that it got cooler out and uh, is growing really nice and lush. That's a beautiful late celery there. Harvest all these beauties. <laughs> Look at these beauties. Oh, oops, you don't want to break the stem off like that because now that's not going to keep. But in general, the chunkier, larger fruits are going to save, uh, keep much longer than smaller ones. So I love how there's just a seed pocket in the bottom and that's all solid. That's a pretty good size one there. All right, there we go. Oh, maybe we'll do these melons here just before yeah, it was a little bit mellowish. Hey, 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 you want to subscribe? I do like it. All right, so this is quite the companion planting I uh, have got going on in this bed too. It's initially a blueberry row, and in front I have a new potato bed this year. It's heavily mulched. Bulbs actually in front of my blueberries. So in the spring, um, tulips come up planted some strawberries that are developing there so next spring i will have strawberries in here as well um, and then i have some squash winter squash planted in between my blueberries Just trying to keep all the runners like pulled through the bed here right through the potatoes as well planted zinnias in here there's some volunteer carrots because i was mulching with carrots hollyhocks and tomatoes high saw nasturtiums basil there's just so many plants and so this is kind of just a good example of how not so you can go with all the uh, plant layering. On the way, got some beauties in here. This is a later maturing one, but I didn't notice it for a little while. It's a real fatty. These have a good color. That's definitely nice and mature. Oh, wet. <laughs> so many butternuts. Uh, I think there's a couple more down that way. I saw a new perennial here. Some holy basil there as well too. Volunteer borage. Oh, there's a the little guy. Beauty. We got cherry tomatoes growing in between here. Chop and drop that comfrey. Beautiful nasturtiums. And a rat or a mouse actually ate off the cluster of tomatoes that I was going to save seed from. So I had to wait longer until these ones up here um, developed or started to getting ripe um, for seed saving. So this is Princep. I got the little point on the bottom, so I know they're true to the type. I think it'll be good saving from a volunteer. It means it's robust because um, it came back on its own um, and it does look true to type. So. Awesome. Win win. Oh, 
All right, let's uh, check some of these potatoes here. Let's grab this fork here. Kale yeah, looks amazing. Sage in here. Got some cabbages, carrots. There's lots to harvest in here. Still waiting on all these potatoes. Actually let some beans go by accident. They're kind of a little bit over. Got a nice amount of celery in there too. It's actually really good to my surprise. And we got more potatoes here. I'm gonna let those go a little bit. I've been digging out of there a little bit. But I wanna check these potatoes here. I think there's a couple different varieties. So saved seed. And there's a beauty. Looking good. Ooh, three big ones. That's always promising. Uh, yeah. Oh, big. Nice. Beauty. Oh, yeah. Good size. Awesome. Yeah, put some organic fertilizer in here as well. And just really nice and loamy. Oh, those are great. Beautiful. Is there a uh, cabot? Really my favorite. Um, large berries, um, June bearing, and all the bulbs are in here too. Ton of tulips. So tulips and strawberries are going to be next spring. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. All right. Quite a nice crop all the way down here all the way along. Took quite a bit of effort to make this bed in the spring. I, uh, it's pretty hard packed here. And so I really dug it down a bit and took out rocks and then just layered manure and straw and actually wood chips too for mulch here that are breaking down. And a bunch of weeds too. So these are looking so good. I think I'm gonna harvest just a little bit more. And then we're gonna go over that way and harvest um, another couple of potato beds that are completely died off. Under the nasturtium plant, the volunteer. Look at all these nice seeds. You can actually make um, capers out of these. I've done it once, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, so you just like pickle them basically, you ferment them with uh, salt lacto ferment. <laughs> and yeah, but that's, that's sweet too. Just all these um, will potentially grow next year. Beautiful potatoes there. A little bean harvest here. This is for seed. These are a doll off, um, a blunted brown shelling bean. They were planted in, uh, in July, I believe it was. Some of the last things I planted actually is like these melons here and this bean tower. Need to cure, they're, they're fat and juicy right now. See, they're uh, like, got that real blunt in there. All right, well, that's good for now. Still quite a few on there. I'll just see how they uh, they turn out. Just leave them for a couple more weeks, right till the end. Oh, since we're standing right here, well, the blueberries are certainly beautiful uh, with the color change of their leaves. Um, but we've got some volunteer carrots here, just like a crazy cluster. I'm just curious to see what went on. Um, it was super thick, maybe not much, but there could be something in here. Holy smokes, <laughs> no way, wow. Whoa, well, that's better than I thought. Holy, look at the food. I just grew in a huge cluster. <laughs> Some neat shaped ones. Look at them all. Wow, should I just, look at all little tiny babies. <laughs> look at how many carrots are grown in like under a square foot. <laughs> Wow, I did not expect that. That's a good carrot. Amazing. Oh, well, there's another whole cluster right over there. Look at that. I did not know that these were growing so fat. Wow, it's like locked in there with like the blueberry. Look at that. Blueberries and carrots. Huh. That is so cool. I want to see if I can pull this cluster up. Baddies, they're all <laughs> wow. amazing, amazing. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, there's more in there. Look at these. That is 
That's incredible. I mulched with carrot tops in here last year and the year before, and uh, some carrots as well, some funky carrots that I threw in with the carrot tops, and uh, that's what happens. Wow, oh wow. Look at that soil. Oh, some good ones. They're loving this deep soil here. Wow, no thinning. Oh, I'm loving life. They're like as big as like the ones that I like, you know, took so much time to seed and thin and everything. And I did absolutely nothing. And they grew in under a square foot, two clusters. And <laughs> incredible. Got parsley growing right here as well and some holy basil. So the fragrance just with the earthy carrots and oh, amazing, I guess. Carrots do grow pretty well in clusters if it's really good, rich soil. Right under a blueberry bush, there's a little squash. Yeah, that really made my evening. That was so fun. Okay, I'm finally gonna make it over to digging some more potatoes over this way now. They do bruise and they won't keep as long. Okay, just one more bed here and uh, I'll, I'll just do all this and then I'll show you the harvest after. All right, pretty happy with that yield there. These two little beds, beauties. Pretty scab free, looking really good. I always like to cover the beds up when I have the material. It's best not to leave the ground exposed um, over winter. So all this straw here keeps the soil nice and healthy. All the microbes thriving. so long on these. They're still fine. Yeah, they're getting a little soft now. Pretty decent sized one. <laughs> That's my best melon this year. I haven't grown melons for forever. I've only grown them a couple times. And it was pretty successful one year. Uh, but these are planted a bit too late for sure. I've only eaten one so far and Juniper has eaten one or two and the rats have eaten a couple as well. It's good, that's just hanging in there instead of having it in the fridge. Those are some beauties. Got them like this. It's getting kind of dim out so I think I'll see you in the morning. More mini melons. It's the next day and just gonna finish up harvesting in this greenhouse here. Got all the melons and uh, peppers cut and just need to Grab all of these San Marzano tomatoes. I'm gonna harvest all the green ones as well. Some nice trusses here. Wow, look at them all. There's two plants there. That's uh, the end harvest. grew so much sweet basil in this greenhouse this year. I also left some plants to go to seed. So that's the first step there. Threw a strainer first. That'll take out a lot of the, about half of it. And then I may be able to winnow it after that. Let's get a fan and throw it up in the air. Different variety, it's called Cinnamonette. Absolutely love it. It's kind of like a Thai basil, but a little even, a little more cinnamony-like. And 
And so I'm gonna collect some of this. I left this plant to go to seed on purpose for collection. I think the uh, dark ones are ideal and the lighter brown ones, they may still germinate. Uh, so let's have a bit of a mix there. There we go, got two different sweet basil varieties. I guess I better um, just pick that so I know which one this is, the cinnamonette. And that is just like a Genovese. All right, so I've got this greenhouse pretty much cleaned up for the most part. Just been trying to do that as I go here as I'm making the video, so I'm not swamped with cleanup later. Still have some more San Marzano tomatoes right here. I'm gonna harvest these quickly. All right, a few more there. That's about it. There's lots that are kind of blemished. Some rodents are eating. All right, all cleaned up. These sunflowers, the birds are still enjoying them. I always leave them right to the end. They've cleaned up a lot of them. Ah, oh, there's seeds in that one still. Actually, what I'm gonna do here is just spread some of these seeds. The color I know I want to come back is this really light yellow one. It's really gorgeous. And they're all beautiful. But... Look at all the seeds. So I'm just gonna scour some of these around and just let them do their thing. Also really like the uh, kind of burgundy red ones. Let's see. I haven't had any sunflowers over here. Kind of in here. Kind of would be cool. <laughs> Big melons growing here. Let's see if some sunflowers come up in the rock garden next year. All right. Oh, it's so beautiful in the food forest here. The golden pathway. Little rose campions. Unique marigold to collect from. It's a like a white marigold here. And these actually get quite a bit larger throughout the season. They're bigger puffballs. And it's just kind of what's left here. Just look how abundant that is. Look how much seed there is there. I paid like three bucks for like 10 seeds or something, right? Of this particular one, just because it's kind of unique. Look how beautiful that is. That'll probably do it. A few thousand seed right there for sure. Oh yeah, I should probably collect some of these beans here as well. Look at that, it's like indigo blue. Beautiful. What I'm gonna do is just select these really nice ones. See these real large ones here. So beans are one of the most simple plants to save seed from. And the great thing about them is that you don't need to be all that concerned about cross-pollination that much. Beans produce perfect and self-fertile flowers, so they readily and easily pollinate themselves. Only beans in the same species are capable of cross-pollinating. Save you quite a bit of money doing so because beans are kind of somewhat expensive. You know, the amount that you get in a packet. Um, so, you know, I can easily save a few thousand seeds here. And it's good to be saving from the crop every year, even if you do have some of last year's seed stock still. Just that way you're getting more acclimatization every year. Oh, look at that. Real nice cucumber. All right, I think that's going to be enough for seed saving there. Still some on there, but I've selected all the nice larger pods, nice full ones. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for this whole south end area for seed collection and harvesting. Oh, except this one bin of sweet potatoes here. It's going to wait a bit longer on those. And oh, maybe harvest some of this. Uh, corn flour, I feel like they're definitely going to be like self-seeding because you can see it just all over the ground here. Look at those little baby marigolds coming up. That's kind of cool. So another thing I like to do sometimes is just grab the whole plant like this. If there's a bunch of seeds still on it and just encourage them to self-propagate. I think here. Ah. And I'll just uh, get pushed down into the earth. The snow and the spring, they probably will self-seed there. Do one more in another place here. Look, there's still some blooming. The uh, bachelor button. Oh, the uh, liatris seed here. All right, I got a mason jar here. I'm just going to uh, collect some of the seed because it's so amazing. Ha, <laughs> that's a good one. Couple more here. There's just so much. There's some zinnia seed there. I'm gonna to try to collect from large zinnia heads though. <laughs> Look at it all on the ground, all the seed. <laughs> the jasmine tobacco is gonna to bloom. There's a real late one. They popped up everywhere. It's so cool that they're just going on the property now. I need to look up to see what variety this is. So these have matured really nicely. Oh, it's fun to save uh, seed from beans. I've got a few different varieties now. Oh, these are like a cocoa 
maybe a white cocoa bean kind of thing. They're pretty round, perhaps. I'll take a look though. Look at all those bugs on there. I'm just shelling them now for fun. They're uh, starting to grow up the nectarine tree here. It's so beautiful in here right now in the food forest. The light coming through, the golden leaves. And it's so protected in this little area here. The zinnias are still going. They're making more blooms. Nasturtium climbing on the blueberry. More zinnia buds. Runner beans is growing up on the plum tree here. Evening primrose, such a gorgeous yellow flower. Still these are making seed now. Some Welsh perennial onions. Some Coreopsis, didn't bloom this year, it's just getting developed. Some other perennials in here. Broccolis are flowering. Strawberry hydrangea is super red now. Goes from white to pink to red. These volunteer raspberries, and they finally showed themselves. The Ann golden berries. I did forget that I have leeks in here still. That's a crop that still needs to be harvested. Yeah, some decent ones here. I think they should have pretty long white necks because they planted them really deep. The celery is growing back. Wow, look at that. Pretty much almost two crops. It's a little thin, but this is all second growth here. That's pretty cool. Ah, oh, beautiful. Carrot going to seed. Oh, wow. Some of these look good. Actually have a rot problem because they're just down on the ground here. Need to get them up onto a bank, but... Donut peach tree is doing pretty good here too. Put on quite substantial growth uh, this summer. Hey! No way, that is a beautiful cluster of beans. So this is lima beans. So they really got bad mites and uh, kind of killed off, but it looks like, well, I'll get some seed anyways for next year, potentially. I don't know, I was thinking of not planting these again. They just seem like they take too long uh, for my climate or they just need even a sunnier location maybe. Just haven't been, really been working out. Whoa, oh, I didn't realize that it was developing. More liatra seed, oh my. <laughs> it's everywhere. Oh, Johnny jump ups. I love these. Look at them. They're just going off. Okay, I think that's going to be it for the little uh, food forest detour. Ooh, look at those. Okay, I'm back in another area of the garden here. Most of them have cured pretty well right on the vine here. Beautiful shelling beans. Look at the color. They're like a kind of like a yin yang. Ones that are almost pretty much cured right on the vine there, and then this pile needs to dry out a little bit longer. All right, I think just the last thing is gonna be some zinnia seed collection. Well, there's some more blue corn flower. Look at those little rocket uh, perennial arugula flowers. Beautiful butter yellow. So gorgeous, the hollyhocks are still blooming this year. Ah, oh, yeah, there's some good seed. Kind of going around and looking for other zinnias because um, quite a few are a bit moldy. Raspberries are still going. Ooh, <laughs> stop along the way and eat some of these golden and berries. Huh, quite a few. trellis again <laughs> keeps on giving
Oh, I just remembered all these uh, tomatillos drooping over this little fence line that I made. Uh, goji berries, yeah, they're making berries, look at that. Oh, here's a whole bunch. That's a big one. Strawberry hydrangea starting to finish up. So gorgeous. Ooh. Big, big wonderfuls here. It's supposed to be just a green variety, but you know you can get purple tomatillos as well. There's a little uh, genetics in there. I'm just gonna comb this through a little bit more and show you the harvest. Hey, 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 right, Goji. Oh, I'm gonna eat this one. They just uh, keep on coming. I keep thinking I'm done the harvest, and then I turn and I remember or see something else. <laughs> oh, I've got to wash those potatoes off. Yahoo! Getting some ripe goji berries finally. It took so long for them to kind of acclimatize and adjust to their environment. <laughs> Look at that. More tomatillos. They're all over. Oh, oh, there's more. Holy. Oh, jeez. I thought I was done picking these meal. Wow, they didn't realize they were growing up into the gojis here so far. There's more. <laughs> Hilarious. So not done. Oh, my uh, goji berry clones. Look at that. Look how many made it. I just stuck all these branches in in the spring and most of them rooted. No problem. Oh, snapped that one. It's still going to grow there. Hey, look at that. Eight new little plants. I could dig up. Should definitely move them. I mean, it's going to be too thick here otherwise. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> There's even broccoli over here still. <laughs> Those ones are good. <laughs> so abundant. Bloom in October. Really gorgeous. And beautiful Sweet William hybrid rose. Hey, bee balm is still going. Most of it's finished. Yeah, there's a parsnip in there. There's on these ones. Holy! Oh, there's more side shoots there. These just kept coming. If I would have picked all these flowers off, kept them picked off, they would have produced more. But look at that. There's still good eating broccoli on the sides. Still a few, even though that they're going to flower. Oops, sorry, bee. Oh, there's a honeybee there. Making some seed pods here. That'd be sweet if they developed. I did want to uh, do that, let some of my broccolis go for seed, um, just for like sprouting in the winter, broccoli sprouts. I'm not sure if these will quite make it, but look at all the, still the edibles there. <laughs> all right, getting quite the uh, collection together here now. Still a few things I remembered now, of course. <laughs> It's never ending. Look at all this beautiful dill seed. Been meaning to collect a bunch of this, so it's time. I'll take it off later. Good for uh, sowing for next year, as well as, you know, pickles. Whoa, that's so slippery. Coriander and dill seed. Some beautiful kale in here. I'm gonna finish picking these zooks. Oh, and these cabbages. Volunteer Siberian kale in here is just gorgeous. I think I'm going to go harvest some celery. Some really good looking celery in here. Since it's cooled down, it's been loving it. Actually, this is some of the nicest celery right here that I've grown. I'm trying to cut it a little bit low so it held together. Wow, look at that. That is a nice, thick, lush, sweet stalk. Some of the best celery this year. It's really good. I'll leave a couple here just to keep. Ooh, I just noticed some really nice volunteer potatoes. Oh, yeah. I gotta move this out of the way here. 
All right, I'm gonna open up a couple of these beautiful melons here. Let's see how these did. Got a mold there, actually. Ooh, nice and orange. Well, that looks good inside. Mmm. Mmm, that's nice and meaty and sweet. Um, very nice and ripe. Still really firm though, it's not like overripe. Mm. I'm concerned that these didn't really potentially mature all the way. So yeah, I'm curious to see though. Oh, not bad. A little bit of dark green in there, but it looks pretty good still. Mmm. Oh, it's really good though still. Wow, it's even juicier than that. Well, that's a mild success. So that was a really fun harvest. Pretty much every time I turned my head, I realized there's something else that needs attending to and harvesting. There's still so much food out there, a lot of carrots, 16 more squash still to come out of the hugel patch. Um, just waiting on lots more potatoes as well. I had so much fun pulling all those carrots out from underneath the blueberry there. There's still celery in the garden. There's still a lot in the garden, but wow. Yeah, these squashes, super plump and beautiful. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hopefully I've inspired you to want to get out there and grow more food and start saving your own seed as well. Until next time, keep your heart inspired. We'll see you soon.